How's it going guys, TexHD here, bringing you off season one for Mining Sods NHL 16, a race for the cup GM mode. If you guys missed last episode, we made the playoffs, but unfortunately we were booted out in the first round by the Toronto Maple Leafs. I was pretty happy with that though, as we traded away a lot of bad contracts and just players we didn't need for prospects as well as picks. So the fact we still made the playoffs, I was pretty happy with. Now guys, we're just going to see into the draft. Hopefully we have a good draft. We have a couple first round picks. Uh, I'd like to see if we can trade up maybe, try and get that first overall pick, get Matthews. Maybe even trade for another first round pick. I think this is going to be the most important draft for us as there's the best amount of, like, there's the most good players in this draft. And after that, it's pretty much a wild card. And of course, we're still trying to race to beat Sod here. And I know he didn't make the playoffs last year, but he traded away a lot of future assets for win now assets. So I think we really got to speed up this uh, rebuild if we want to win. I don't think we have time to wait for all of our picks or all of our prospects and picks to, you know, uh, come to their full potential. So. We'll see what happens here with the draft, but like I said, we really got to speed things up, make sure we can uh, beat Sod of this first Stanley Cup. So at the draft now, guys, like I was saying, I'd like to try and get that first overall pick in Matthews, as I know he starts out in 82, and I think we really need players that are, you know, ready to go, opposed to prospects that are like low 60s, going to take forever. That's why this draft is so much more valuable than every other draft, as these players are going to have the most amount of time to get good, opposed to every single draft year after this. So Buffalo's got the first overall pick. Let's see if we can make a trade here and get it from them. Right here, guys, I'm trying to trade our 2017 first-round pick along with our 2018 first-round pick and this year's second-round pick for the Buffalo Sabres first-round pick, which, of course, is first overall. For whatever reason, they're looking to shop their pick, and they're actually interested in our second-round pick. And like I was saying earlier, the 2016 draft is so much more important than every year after, so that's why I'd like to keep the two first-round picks I already have. This would give us three, which would be huge. We could get Matthews and then two more solid players later in the draft. So here we go. Let's see if they say yes. Trade accepted. That's huge. So now we can get Austin Matthews as well as two more solid players that hopefully uh, can turn out quick. So like I was saying, guys, obviously we're going to go with Matthews here with the first overall. Chitrin, Lane, Pliarvi, and Jones were the other four top five players. But Matthews starts out in 82, and I don't think any of them start out like higher than a 69 as far as I know. So uh, he's the obvious choice. Our next first round pick is pick 11. So that's actually really high pick. We could get a solid player there. All right, guys, so here's a look at the top 10 picks. Matthews went one, Chitrin two, Pliar v three, and Lane four. If you switch Lane and Chitrin, it's kind of realistic as Edmonton might take Chitrin if they don't trade the pick. Jones went five, Brown went six, Pierre-Luc Dubois went seven, Benson eight, Jurat nine, Bean went 10. I was actually hoping we could have got him with the 11th pick. Was thinking the Oilers might take him. We probably should try to make a trade with the Oilers, trading our 11th and some st like random stuff for the 10, but it was a risk, I guess, and I probably should have made the trade, like I said. But we can still get a really solid player here at pick number 11, so I'm not too upset about it. Um, a lot of good players. I know we have a lot of defensive prospect depth. I think before I said I wanted a defenseman, but I think actually uh, we have a lot of defensive prospects, especially after trading for Shea Theodore. So I might actually go forward here with pick number 11. Um, Green I've never heard of, even though it says top 10. Um, I don't know how comfortable I feel making that pick. Uh, we got Soy there, Ulevi, that's a solid pick. Gettinger, Day's usually pretty good in this, turns out pretty good. Howden, Middlestone, Kriski. Kachuk's also pretty good usually in this. LeJoy, Steele, so pick number 11 here. Like I said, I feel like I don't really want to take a defenseman. There's a lot of defensemen still on the board too. There's four to five defensemen. Our next pick's like 20-something. And the guy I kind of like, the guy I'm kind of eyeing right now is Kachuk. I feel like a lot of times he has really good potential. It's a bit of a reach here, but I'm going to go with Kachuk. Give us some more winger depth. Here we go. Let's see his potential. Elite. There we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we reached on him, but it was worth it. Um, our next pick now is pick number 21. So hopefully there's still another solid prospect waiting for us. As you guys can see, pick number 12 was Kriski, 13 Steel, 14 Green, 15 Howden, 16 Lajoie, and he has high lead potential as a defenseman. So kind of missed out on him, but I'm still happy with Kachuk. 17 was Sean Day. And, I mean, the guy I was going to take probably was Sean Day or Kachuk, so I'm glad I took Sean, or I'm glad I took Kachuk. 18 was Pequa Bodwin, I think his name is. 19, Kerwin. 20, Gettinger. We have 21. That means we could actually take Ulevi here, who's still available. Um, I think he might be the best player available, too, because he was pretty high, I think, when we were picking at 11. Um, I was, I was kind of eyeing him or Sean Day, so let's go to projected here. Maybe we could get, you know, the two uh, top London Knights. I'm a Spitz fan, so... Kind of hurts, but still okay. Soy there, and then yeah, Ulevi's number two. Millstone, Davidson, Gerard. Um, still some solid guys left here. I'm just kind of curious. Nylander's there, Sergeyev. I wouldn't mind either of them. Might even try trading back into the second round, get a couple second round picks to grab them. So, uh, for this pick though, I think it's pretty simple. I think we got to go Ulevi here. I feel like he's the 
safest pick this is the biggest name i recognize low elite potential there we go we had three first round picks all three picks have elite potential between uh Ulevi, kachuk and matthews pretty solid first round in my opinion so our next pick guys is pick number six in the fourth round we didn't have a second or third but that's okay when you have three first round picks and we actually had, i just realized so we had three first round picks back to back years because the bruins had three first 2015 and they just had three firsts in 2016 so Pretty crazy. I think we did a lot better this year uh, than the Bruins did last year, but still, we are going to be loaded with high-end talent. Um, nothing here under projected. Let's go to potential and just see what's available. 7th D, 4th slash 5th round, high league interest. Hopefully, it's better than a 7th D. Hopefully, it's a top 6. 7th D, what can you do? Next pick here is number 19 in the 5th round. Again, we just got to basically hope for a steal in the draft i've hit some crazy steals before like i've gotten top six forwards late i've gotten top four i've gotten top six d i think even top four d um late in the draft or not top four yeah top six d um bomb six forward there undrafted no interest i'm gonna take them hopefully my scouts are right hl top six forwards so they're a bit off there just realized we have back-to-back -back picks there in the fifth round didn't even realize that when i made that last pick so um, I think I might just go for a wild card here. I don't think I'm going to go by the scouts. I think I'm just going to go projected and just hope we hit because our scouts were a bit off there. And there was nothing left it didn't look like besides like a backup goalie. So projected here, what looks like it could be something. Chernak, or this guy's got highly interest, Egli. Highly interest, let's go for him. Bomb six forward, that's what we wanted. So there's a look at our draft, guys. I thought we had a sixth round pick as well, but our sixth round is actually in 2017, and that's the only pick we have in 2017. But still, this draft was a success. Matthews, Kachuk, Yulevi, and then the rest of it doesn't even matter after those three players. So I'm pretty happy. Should give us a very speedy recovery. Going to go to the re-sign phase now, and uh, hopefully we can keep all of our players. All right, guys, we're at the re-sign phase here. Looking at the centers, we are stacked. We got Bergeron, Krejci, Spooner. Kokoch is now an 83, so he's obviously going to want a new deal. He's our fourth line center. He's actually only wants 775,000. Uh, as soon as we go to two years, though, he wants more. So we'll just give him that for this year. Um, see what happens. Matthew's 83 off the bat from the draft. So we'll draft him as well. Give him a max rookie deal. So we're going to have five, six centers, like I was saying. One of them will have to move to the wing, but I'm fine with that. Um, we've got a couple RFA centers here we can just uh, re-sign for now. Uh, we'll just give them basically whatever they want. One year is fine with me. They're still going to be an RFA and just play it by ear basically left wingers here louis erickson is a new deal he's a ufa i'm fine giving him one 4.2 is a bit steep i'd rather give him like four on the dot i think um marchand hallish chuck it's a solid depth winger 82 1.7 is a bit ex or 1.275 um i guess i give him like mm, i'm gonna be trying to cheap on him here 1.15 one year he actually goes really cheap okay let's give him let's give him a one year deal because by next year we might not even need him so Every thousand for one year. Kelly, I'm also fine with having for one year. He wants one and a half though at 82 overall, and he's 35 years old. I think we're just gonna have to let Kelly go. That's just not worth it. Uh, Lemieux there. He was one of the guys we traded for. 74 overall now. Or I think that's what he was before. I don't. I don't know what I'm saying now. Furlan here's an RFA. We'll just give him a one year deal. Same with this dude. Or he wants two. That's fine. Basically, just give those guys what they want. Uh, there's Kachuk, 68 overall. So hopefully. He doesn't take too long to get good. Pasternak. Griffith wants a new deal. 1.175 for two years. That could be really good if he develops right. So give him 1.1 for two. He could be like an 84 and 85 this year or if he goes over this, grows over the summer. You never know. Stepniak. Again, going to depend. 1.2 for three. He's 33 years old. I feel like I can find better in the uh, free agency. Connolly still got some potential. Give him a one-year deal. Ferrero. I basically kind of Detroit biased here. We'll give him a give him a one year deal to play in the AHL, then we'll see what happens with him. Um, defense, I forgot to tell you guys. I noticed this uh, when we were trading at the draft. Zdeno Char retired, so we definitely missed out on trading him last year. Even though we did make the playoffs, so he probably was a big help in you know making helping us make the playoffs. And then you never know, like we definitely could have had a better shot of winning the cup with him than without him. So I think we had to keep him, but sucks we couldn't trade him. Krug though is an 87 now. Then we have Seidenberg at 83, 34 years old. I'd actually like to trade his contract. Morals in 83. We basically have to wait for all these young defensemen to get good. So we're going to have to trade for a couple, I think, like 24-year-old solid defensemen here. Uh, Krug's going to want a new deal. $5 million for four years. Doesn't really want that much more for like six um, at all. So let's give him 
five million six years see if he takes that um moral here's an 83 what's he want one and a half or two i think that's pretty fair we'll give him like 1.375 every little bit you can save is worth it erwin at 28 i can sign him for like a third three million for 82 overall that's not worth it at all miller here 81 wants 1.5 for 81 that's just not worth it john michael lyles wants 900k but he's 35 years old so i'm gonna have to let him go um i think i'm gonna let Ir irwin go too like 3 million just not worth it we got 30 million in cap space i'm just gonna splash in free agency uh miller even wanted 1.5 for one and a half or 81 overall which isn't worth it especially when we got all these guys with high 70s coming up like 79 overall for 675,000. why am i gonna pay a guy um one and a half for 81 overall doesn't make sense theodore's on the cusp russo's on the cusp this trotman guy's got ahld but he's 76 he might be solid just for the ahl i'll give him 700k i guess um the leave we signed him last year as a free agent doesn't really look like he grew much give him another chance one more year you'll 61 overall these are the three um or not these three zaboro lozon and carlo are the three uh 18 year olds from last year carl looks to be progressing the most hopefully one of them can have a big big summer rask's all locked up to carcy i feel is a really solid backup I'll give him 1.25 for two years. Uh, Lindback's the odd man out. We don't need him. Uh, Smith no longer has potential, so he's gone. I want my HL goalie to actually have potential. Gillies is a, start, a, start, a solid sorry, HL starter. Um, I'll give him a two-year deal for like 700 k Hopefully he takes that. We'll have to find an HL backup. And that should still give us a lot of money here to you know use on free agency or even in trades. As you guys can see, Halaschuk accepted our offer. Same with Moro, Erickson. I'm hoping everybody accepted our offer. Um, we'll see here if anyone did not. It looks good so far. Uh, so I think everyone accepted our offer. I'll go check the contracts, but I didn't see any rejected, so should be good to go. So I checked the contracts, guys, and everyone did accept our offers. Was when there wasn't any holdouts or anything like that. So moving on to free agency now. Cody Cece's a free agency. That's huge. He's an RFA, though. Hudler's a free agent. Demir's 84 overall, that's not that great. Gravner, Wurchioch, 25, 84 overall. He's got one more year to get good. The rest of them are just all depth forward. So, CC, I don't even think we have the picks to sign in all honesty, but I could still try. I'm looking at the compensation page, guys, and no matter what we offer CC, we can't sign him as our only pick this year is a sixth round pick, and pretty much every salary range requires a first round pick in this year's draft. So, what we can do is try and trade for him. Uh, before he signs with anybody and then we can sign him so i'm gonna try and trade for him with ottawa as he kind of fits exactly what we need we're here guys the offer making ottawa for cody cc as you can see the reason they didn't sign him is because they have absolutely no cap room they've got like one and a half million maybe he's not on their trade block which he basically should be it's not like they're gonna be able to keep him and because i don't have any salary cap i have to basically offer them prospects so i'm offering them saboro here he's one of our three 18 year old defenseman now 19 year old he's actually the lowest overall of the three so that's how i chose him as well i'm giving them sorella who he signed as a free agent last year he's a center though and we already have so much center depth now with matthews and kolpachev both being 83s uh, i don't really need him uh, those two players give them more trade value but of course it's two players they don't want for a player they don't want to get rid of but it might work here we go trade accepted i think that's a huge deal for us just gotta make sure uh, we can sign cc now before someone gives him a uh, a contract offer. As you guys can see, Cody CC wants a three-year deal at 5.25 million. I'm going to see if he'll take 5.25 for four years. That'll just bump it up by 200k. And I'm thinking he'll, he's going to keep getting good, so that extra year might come in handy. Hopefully we can win the cup before then, but if not, want to be prepared. Looking at goalies, guys, normally I'd sign Frederick Anderson as Anaheim pretty much always lets him go to free agency, but we already have Rass, so there's no point. Vicentine here, though, 23 years old, 77 overall. I feel like he could potentially turn out as a long shot, but 650,000 for two years. Why not take the risk? I'm just going to try and sign some solid young uh, prospects here on two-way deals. Ozmek here, 20 years old. Same one overall. Top 9-4 potential. Seems like a pretty good pickup. Same with this Kovacs guy here. Worst case scenario, they don't pan out. It's not a huge, huge loss. Uh, Cassie here, I think you say his name is. Also looks decent enough. Um, this Luke guy, or Luke, I don't know how to say it. I'll give him a deal as well. Then it's low top nine forwards, which I don't know. This guy's 23 years old, 75 overall. Oh, that's Tyler Biggs. You know what? Let's uh, let's give him a one-year deal. 23. You never know. He could turn out. Krill's there, 67. Low top nine forward. I feel like we have so many spots, especially when they're younger. 
gives you uh, more time to get good. Ted and Beast 26, he's done growing. This guy's got top 60 potential, 20 years old. Uh, I think we have a lot of roster spots, so should be able to make that offer. Edmonton also has an offer on him, though. Uh, Lindholm here, make an offer on him. Force lane, I don't know how many uh, roster spots I have left. Three low 6D. We'll go with the 26 guys. Oh, that's Luke Shen. He's done for. So we'll give an offer to this Jaros guy and this Vanier guy. I don't know if I have enough uh, space for all this. Um, well, this guy's got two teams. You know what? Screw it. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten guys. We get them all. Um, I'm not even sure if I have that many roster spaces. As you guys can see, Cody CC did accept our offer. Uh, 5.25 million for four years. So that's a huge pickup. Him and Kruger's our top pair is awesome. That Brett Lernock guy actually went with Oilers. So I'm guessing he's the team that's uh, drafted him or whatever and just hadn't made, worked out a deal yet. Uh, this Cast guy accepted our offer. Same with Look, Forslein, Jaros. Uh, this Kovacs guy went, to the, went with the Blue Jackets. Lindholm accepted our deal. Krills. Uh, I'm not sure. There might have been a couple more. Uh, Byzantine went with the Lightning, that kind of sucks. Maybe I should have given him more money. Uh, I did get what he wanted though. Tyler Biggs went with, our, with us. Ozmik went with us. So I think that's it. I still gotta go get a goalie then since Byzantine rejected. And then just try to see if we make some trades here to improve our team for next year. So I'm gonna give this Vala Harju guy an offer. 19 years old, 67 overall. Fringe starter potential. He'll be our AHL backup uh, for the time being. As you guys can see, that goalie prospect signed with us. So. Hopefully it can grow a bit over the summer, maybe be like a 70 by the start of the season. Be a solid AHL backup. All right, guys, we're trying to make a trade with New Jersey for Adam Larson. 87 overall, 23-year-old defenseman with low elite potential. And actually, right now, for whatever reason, his morale is down. So he could even be a higher rating than that uh, when his morale is up. So this is kind of like the perfect time to trade for him. Offering them believe he was one of those guys we signed last year as a free agent. Solid potential, but I mean, Larson's like a couple years older and already way better. And I think Philippe usually maxes out 85, 86. Uh, Kulikov, we just drafted. We've got decent potential for a 7th deep pro uh, prospect, so might as well trade him. And our second round pick in not this year's draft, but next year's draft, which we could end up using. But if it gets a deal done for Adam Larson, I'm fine with making that trade. So here you go. We'll see if they say yes. Trade accepted. That's a huge add. Our defense just got so much better with CC and Larson along with Krug. Uh, we'd still like to add a couple guys in depth because we have Moro, we have Theodore coming up, but... We'll see what's up there in free agency. Maybe make one more big deal this summer. So because we still have so much cash space, guys, we still have $13 million. I'm going to offer both Lewis and Brower one-year $3 million deals. Uh, they're both pretty young uh, for free agents, 29 and 30. So it's not like they're going to start regressing too quick. But I just don't want to be really tied with them for that long at you know too much money. I think $3 million for 83 overall is a bit of an overpayment. But I'm fine doing it with one year if I have the cap space. But obviously moving forward, I'm going to need that money for other players. So Montreal's interested in him. I'm going to see if he takes this deal or not. It looks like he probably won't. Or three point, I'll give him the 3.5, honestly. I'd rather pay him 500 k and not be like, you know, have to, not have to worry about trading him um, than sign him for $3 million for two years. So that's fine. Uh, Brower, same thing. He wants 3.4. So we'll give him 3.4 for one year. And it basically just gives us more flexibility for next year. And it gives us a bit uh, bet more added forward depth for this year. Now, as you guys can see, Trevor Lewis accepted our offer. We'll see here, Brower does two, and Brower did two. So a couple solid uh, pickups there for depth. Right here, guys, I'm trying to trade for Mueller. Pretty solid young defenseman, 21 years old, 82 overall. Trading them Seidenberg, who they actually want, even though he's 35. He's one overall higher, but he's getting paid $4 million for the next two years. I'd like that contract off the books. Getting them Seneshin, a solid prospect, but usually takes too long to develop. And he usually doesn't even get better than like an 82. Uh, these two guys we actually just drafted, but neither are going to be that great by the looks of it. And then the seventh round pick in 2019, just a little, little bit of sliver extra value uh, in case it's a bit of a tie. Even though right now, we're giving them like double the value. Of course, they don't want to trade Mueller though, so we'll see if they take it or not. He doesn't have too much value on their team. Here we go. Trade accepted. That's a huge deal. We're probably done for the summer, uh, but we'll see if we have to do anything else. Before we move on to next season, guys, I figured I'd show you the awards from last season. So, of course, Anaheim Ducks there won the Cup. Uh, Chicago they got the President's Trophy, Anaheim of course with the Clarence S. Campbell, and then Detroit actually with the Prince of Wales, so Detroit lost in the Stanley Cup Final. Player awards here came with the Art Ross, Tuka Rask actually at the Hart Memorial. Uh, our team wasn't that good, but he carried us to the playoffs. Carlson with the James Norris, came with the Lady Bing, McDavid with the Calder, uh, Gibson there with the Con Smythe, Rask also won the Vesden, which makes sense, and the William and Jennings. Uh, I didn't even realize that, we had the fewest goals against uh, in, in the entire league. So Rask literally carried us. Uh, Tanev there with the Bill Masterson. 
Bergeron got the Selkie for third straight year. Uh, Rask also won the Lindsay, and then came with the Maurice Richard. So we took home five trophies um, after that season where we basically traded for picks and prospects and uh, made it to the playoffs with a second seed. And unfortunately, of course, got booed in the first round. And Rask took home four trophies alone. So that's pretty crazy. HL here. We'll see if uh, Providence got anything. Doesn't look like they got any team awards, player awards. Anthony Mantha there with a ton of awards. Percy, Picard. So nothing there in the NHL, but that's fine. Um, I'm pretty happy with how we did in the NHL in terms of awards. Right here, guys, I'm trying to make a huge trade. Trading Krejci to the Nashville Predators for Philip Forsberg we're going to second round pick. Reasoning behind this, Matthews Gudu an 85 over the summer. His new role, second line center, he's on the third line right now. So I don't want to stunt his growth. Also, Kolkachev and Spooner both 85s. We can really move on from Krejci, and we could use the winger support as outside of uh, Erickson and Marchand. All of our other wingers are still pretty young and not that high rated, so could use somebody like Forsberg, who's an 86. I'll play first line. He's 22 years old. Also, we get a second round pick in this year's draft, a draft where we have no picks. So we'll see if they say yes to this. It'd be a huge deal if they do, and they did. So huge deal there. The only th bad thing about it is our uh, locker room chemistry is probably not going to be great to start off the season, but if we don't make too many trades, we should be okay. So here are our lines going to next season, guys. We have Forsberg, Bergeron, Erickson on the first line, Pasternak, Matthews, Marchand on the second, Brower, Spooner, Griffith on the third, Lewis, Koklachev, and Halaschek on the fourth. Defense, we have Larson and CeCe as the first pairing. CeCe's an 89 now, so that was a huge trade we made for him. Only 22 years old, so he's going to get even better. Morrow and Krug on the second, Mueller and Theodore on the third. I think both these guys are going to grow a lot over the season. Goalie, of course, we still have Rask, who's a 93. Hopefully he can carry us again. Tukarski there, I think, is a solid back of an 83. In the AHL, pretty solid AHL team there. We have Toronto, Cernic, Connolly, pretty solid first-line AHL. Uh, Rajla, Sabarusa, Biggs, Lemieux there, who we traded for. Hopefully he can turn out. He's no longer got elite potential, but still happy with that trade. We got rid of uh, somebody's bad contract, Bolesky's, I think. Ferrero, Ferrero, Ferrero on the third. Ozmik, Ferlin, and Niemen in the fourth. Defense here, we got Miller. Russo, he was that the guy we traded for from Detroit. He had elite potential, now it's top 4D. Still fine with that. Belmore, Trotman, Jaros, and Carlo, who I also hope are going to grow a lot over this year. And then in goal here, we have Gillies as our starter, 79 overall. And then the backup there is 69, Vala Harju. So I think our teams are looking pretty good going into this year. I'm pretty high, excited about it. I think we honestly have an outside chance here at the Stanley Cup. HL team, 78 offense, 79 defense, 78 goaltending. NHL team, 91 offense, 90 defense, 94 goaltending. Locker room chemistry went down after we traded Krejci. You know, he was a core part of that team, but I think we had to do it. So hopefully, even if we don't start off too good, if we don't make too, if we don't make any trades basically till the trade deadline, team, you know, morale and chemistry should build up over then, and we should be in okay shape. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, leave that thumbs up. Make sure to check out Sods. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.